Yo ho ho and a barrel of welcome back to Electronic 3 2018. I'm Tim Rogers with Kotaku.com and if you're wondering why I'm wearing sunglasses, it's because this guy here, Brian Toro, cameraman, has this bright LED light in my face and you'd be wearing sunglasses too. I'm piloting my boat toward the LA Convention Center. Yeah, I have a boat. I don't actually have a license, however, I know one thing about piloting a boat from watching enough pirate movies. It's that you do this, you rotate the wheel constantly, clockwise, and the boat moves forward, as though propelled. And now that I've adequately practiced my maritime technique, maybe it's time to take a look at Bluebysoft's Skull and Bone. Did I, did I call it Blue Soft again? God darn it. Let's take a look at Skull and Bones. If you played Assassin's Creed 4, you probably loved the pirate boat segments because it's a game about being a pirate. You might as well be on a pirate boat. So we've got this here. I saw, I saw some people on the internet daring to accuse Ubisoft of copying Sea of Thieves. And it's like, sure, Sea of Thieves has brought pirates back into the game like her consciousness. However, it was Ubisoft who made pirates pretty cool in Assassin's Creed 4. And I always thought that Assassin's Creed 4 pirate boat mechanic really could have been broken off into its own game. There was something, uh, there was something vaguely esportsy about it. A lot of cool downs and warm ups. Now, is Skull and Bones the perfect, sublime, deep, large, rewarding, electronic pirate boat sport that the world deserves? I don't know. I'm looking at it, and I love it. Graphics are beautiful. I'll probably play this with my buddies. We'll get on a boat, and we'll just be on an e-boat for a little bit. I think, okay, being totally honest, this, this might be a little bit more my speed than Sea of Thieves. I love Sea of Thieves. It's hilarious. This, however, is just such a such a game likers game, you know. So I got my eye on it. I've got my my eye on it. Now let's take a look at For Honor. Ubisoft's booth is very very luxurious. It's very spacious. They they really really care about the booth just being wide open. It's this very wide open space. It's luxurious. You don't feel crowded. You don't feel claustrophobic in this booth. So I, I really actually appreciate that sort of a lot. For Honor here is a a game that, you know what, this game owns a lot, and uh, I see some people try to talk smack about it, and I don't get it, because it's just, the game owns. And now we've got this uh, this expansion, For Honor Marching Fire, not to be confused with uh, The Hunger Games Catching Fire, or whatever that, that book is called. Here's Trials Rising, I gotta say, they've gone for, for this uh, street racing aesthetic, which I like. I, uh, I like the Trials games, they're just some of the original nonsense, some of the original uh, funny physics fails. MP4 exports were a uh, plomb with the antics of this game. They could have called this game Floppy Bike. For the next one, make Trials Floppy, where the where the bike is curiously, unpredictably unrigid in parts. Not the whole thing. Just sometimes parts of it are too noodly. That would add some, I want to say much needed challenge. I almost said much needed challenge. That would indicate to you, the viewer, that I'm actually really, really good at these games and they're not actually that hard, if you ask me. You like this game? You like getting over it with Bennett Foddy? There, I mean, there it is. There's a game called Kickstart for the Amiga that's very similar to Trials. That's a shout out to Bennett Foddy. If you like Trials, check out Kickstart on the Amiga. Get an Amiga, get on eBay. Buy one, it'll cost you way more than, than this game, Trials Rising, just to get the Amiga. And then the frustration of setting the game up, it'll take you all day. And then you'll have maybe like half the fun that you would have with like half a level of this game. It's good though, it's game history. You wanna, you wanna be a part of it. Let's keep going. We've got Assassin's Creed Odyssey, also known as Assassin's Grease. These games are just getting greasier and greasier. And they've, they've, they've slickened up Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Of course I'm going to play this game. However, I just, my one complaint 
is it's called Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and I've always wanted a video game based 100% on the Odyssey. If anyone was planning to make the Odyssey the game, it might have been scrapped because of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Like, well, we can't use the word Odyssey. So they can call it Ulysses, but then that would be using the Roman names and not the Greek ones. And then at that point, it's all not Greek to me at that point. So let's, uh, let's keep looking around. What do we have? We have one of the stars of Assassin's Creed Odyssey here. Mr. Spartan, I believe is his name. Not enough video game characters have exposed abs that are just ripped and rippling. Now I could take my shirt off and show you all what I've got. However, most of you would throw up. Let's 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 move along. Let's keep moving. What else? What else have we at the Ubisoft booth? This isn't going to come across in the 2D image. However, it's it's neat. It's popping out in 3D. It's remarkable, and that's why I'm remarking on it. However, I'm going to step off of this platform. So there's this game, Starlink. Have you guys heard of this game? This game, Starlink? Have you heard of it? Look, dude, this game has Star Fox in it. Look at the little guy. This is one of these toys to life games. So you put together the toy, and then it becomes to life in the game. So it's, uh, it's like Ubisoft is making their own sort of Skylanders. Skylanders is for kids or my little brother. Clint, I know you play with the Skylanders, you're 30 years old, it's okay. You should see my house, I have about $2,000 worth of Dragon Quest XI merchandise, so it's it's okay, I'm not, I'm not hating. So let's actually take a look at the game, and look at this. It just looks like, my guess is, when this game was in pre-production, the developers said, what kind of game should we make? And they said, let's just make a game that's really cool, man, I don't know, and then that's it, look at this. You fly a ship around, you shoot stuff. That's honestly all that I want. It's even got like a cast of characters on this poster here. There's a girl with a sort of yakisoba looking hair and a bandana. There's a kid with a hoodie with a monkey on it. I mean, come on. Uh, we have The Division 2. I gotta say, here's something. Here's me talking about The Division. There's a whole lot of game design in that game. Game designers, level designers working on that top of their field. This is what I like. There's a whole lot of like board game influence. It feels like they've played a lot of tabletop games and they've just thought about what's good about a game, what's what's intriguing, what builds suspense, what what tickles the psychology of a person who's going to spend tens of hours playing a game just to get into it and then possibly hundreds of hours trying impossibly to master it. The steely gaze of these murderous game players chewing their gum and wearing their headphones and staring at the screen. They're hungry for meat, human meat. They're thirsty for blood, human blood. They came to E3 for blood, and they're gonna drink their fill. So here's a, here's a fun little fact. I'm gonna say this. Somebody's gonna think I'm not being serious. I'm being serious. When I first came to E3, it was all about the free stuff, the swag getting stuff, people give you stuff. So th there are these giant bags that you then fill with the stuff. There's people handing out bags that have giant advertisements, a billboard for a video game that you then fill with the free stuff. T-shirts like crazy. And the T-shirts were terrible. You wore them once, usually to bed or in the shower, and then you threw them away. They disintegrated about as quickly as your memory of the video game that they depicted. Now they give out these swag bags, these giant bags, and what do you use them for? As our cameraman Brian Toro pointed out, you use them to put your Trader Joe's groceries in weeks later. And then you get laughed at on the bus by someone who says, what, what's, uh, what's Fallen Kingdom explosions rising? What is that? And you're like, ah, it's some video game sponsored by an energy drink. Uh, and then they're like, oh, what do you got in there? You're like, broccoli. Now though, and I mean this in all sincerity, there's a store where you can go in and buy stuff. So instead of getting garbage, garbage swag, just nonsense trinkets and stuff that is going to disintegrate in the rain or become shellacked with spaghetti sauce, you can go in here and buy something that's actually pretty cool. They have like good t-shirts and good things and you pay a bit of a price. However, 
You can't get it anywhere else. I'm actually sufficiently hyping myself up to go in here. We're not gonna go in there with the camera. I'm gonna go in there after we turn the camera off. Let's uh, let's keep looking around. What else? What else have we at this Bluebee Soft booth? Um, I think we should go over to that dirt bike, and then I sit on it and go, well, that's all for Ubisoft. I'm getting out of here, and we can then edit from this point to the point that I'm on the bike. So we're gonna, I'm gonna snap my fingers, then we're just gonna be on the bike. So here we go. Ready? Well. That's all for the Ubisoft booth. I'm gonna ride this dirt bike out of here, and uh, I think I'm gonna go to In-N-Out and pick up some uh, some tasty burgers on this dirt bike. I meant to make like a joke, like something that sounded scripted. However, that sounds like a genuinely very good idea. I'm Tim Rogers. I was born stupid. However, I will not die hungry. Video games forever. Kotaku.com at E3 two zero one eight. Trials Rising, Ubisoft, Bluebisoft, Rubisoft, Boobisoft.